It's fascinating to people because the person who creates the puppet show can create a whole little universe. Everything can be one inch tall or 100 feet tall, and the performers can take any shape. They can be animal, they can be mineral, they can be anything. We build all sorts of puppets in the puppet shop for all the different shows we do here, which we do hand puppet shows and shadow puppet shows. Right now we're working on a marionette show, and one of the biggest things that we have to decide right up front is how big everything is going to be. With puppets, it, it varies widely from puppets being you know, 12 inches tall to being, I think the biggest one that I've built here was uh, like 16 feet. Once we have the scale, uh, we make the bodies out of wood, making sure that all the joints work. With this particular show, we decided to sculpt and cast um, neoprene heads for most of the marionettes that we're making. We sculpt a clay head, and once that's approved, we move into making the mold for that uh, clay head. And we do that by using a water-based clay to create a surround, a box per se, to pour the plaster into. Um, we make a two-part plaster mold most of the time and we pour the plaster in, let it cure, flip it over and do the other half of the mold. And then once we have the plaster mold, we pour in a liquid called neoprene and uh, once that hardens, we take that out of the mold and we have a, a plastic head. Marionettes are, are a little difficult, a little more difficult than some other kinds of puppets, mostly because there's nothing between the performer and the puppet except some string. So the, the puppets themselves have to be made pretty well or they're just not going to work at all. We use such a broad uh, kind of range of skills. We use everything from carpentry to sculpture to wood carving to sewing skills that's often required, um, you know, painting. There are a lot of challenges. Um, it's, it never becomes routine. It, it never really becomes stale because we're always working on new things. What's really the most exciting is when they start, like each puppet gets to the point in the build stage where it starts to have a personality. <laughs> it's not just an arm and a leg and a disembodied head, you know, where they all start to come together and you can see the personality of the puppet start to emerge even before the puppet puppeteer ever gets their hands on it. Oh, where did you come from? Stowaway, maybe? Kill all them! Do you know the pirate password? Little Pirate Mermaid uh, is an adaptation of the Hans Christian Andersen story. And we kind of came up with a pirate angle to give it a a new twist in a way, and also make it help appeal to the boys in the audience who might not find this love story or, you know, that exciting. Kill all them! Speak up, lad. Or... Oh, that is the password! We kill all them anyway! Doing the show with marionettes is probably one of the hardest uh, techniques, mainly because you're so distanced and all you have is a thin string. We use fish line. You're really working with gravity and momentum. So in addition to just holding the puppets up, you have to be aware of if I start swinging this a little too hard, they'll just spin crazily out of control. A good marionettist is really hand-eye coordination, also being able to work in teams, um, as you'll see in our shows. There you go. Yeah, just keep passing around. See, that's pretty cool. Sometimes a puppeteer will be controlling one part of the puppet while the second puppeteer is controlling another control of the puppet. So one puppeteer may be controlling the head while the other puppeteer is controlling the legs and arms. So they have to be very good at teamwork and coordinating with one another while also working in very tight spaces and working essentially on top of one another. Most of the time you're spent bent over, leaning out over into the, there's an empty space where the puppets perform. To get to that, you have to reach very far out. So you're automatically doing this and you're bent over. There's a leaning rail, but for rehearsals, you're spending eight hours a day in a very awkward position. So it's kind of a marathon in a way. <laughs> you have to sort of find that meeting ground where you're at one with the figure. And then, then it's a wonderful moment where it's you feel the characters are alive and you're really doing nothing. That's the moment that you really try to achieve. 
you're looking down on them and they're just alive. And somehow you're just standing up above, kind of watching this and not really participating at all. It, all, it becomes that organic for the puppeteers. And that's what they're trying to do.